So I'd now like to call the March 13th, 2023 Parks and Recreation Advisory Board meeting to order. Can we please start with the roll call? Aaron Angel. Here. Scott Conlin. Here. Thomas David. Here. Paige Lewis. Sam Libby. Here. Nicholas Novello. Here. Dan Olson. Here. Council Liaison Tim Water. Here. Great. We have forum. All right, so let's move on to the uh, approval of the agenda from the packet. Does anyone have any questions or request of changes to the, to the, to the agenda? Uh, if not, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? I move to approve the agenda. Okay. Second. That's great. Uh, moving on to the approval of the previous month's minutes. So, does anyone have any questions or request to change this to the previous month's minutes? No. Oh. Yeah, I have. Uh, yeah. I'll find it quick. It was toward the end. Okay. <laughs> 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 Gosh, I'm not going to be able to find it. I'm sorry. I had some. Um, it was at the end of that. I'm sorry, never mind. You sure? Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't want to keep, take time. Was it like a grammatical error or no, a there was, error? No, there was a um, short phrase that didn't really explain anything, and I was confused. And now I, I can't find it, so. How is it that Dan Olson mentioned shoveling? It was in the shoveling, yeah, and it didn't. Like number 10. Uh, thank you. Um, well, yeah, and then toward the end, it, there was something. Oh, plastic shovels and snow blowers with plastic blades, period. Yeah, is that okay? Is that not okay? I don't <laughs> remember what we discussed. The so city... It came from, um, we've been working close to the pickleball community, and they have asked if they could kind of help regulate their, their members to use um, plastic shovels and um, snow blowers with rubber blades, actually. Okay. Um, so you typically get... Um, Temporary hit group has suggested that's all right. There's kind of a history that we have told, told tennis otherwise, but um, we think we're going to be consistent in that as long as we have people um, trying to provide information to their community that we want people to enjoy beautiful Colorado sunny days and to use plastic shovels or rubber. rubber so rubber. it's okay if I tell the LTA folks that? Yes. Okay. Jeff, that's thank you, you got as well. Exactly this the problem. Yeah. Consistency <laughs> to what we're yeah. Yeah. You would ask the question. I did, and then I the answer didn't say one way or the other, and it just confused me. And uh, you know, thank you. So, do we need to amend the minutes to update that, or, or uh, if you would, that would be nice because this may. I, I'm guessing the fellow at LTA will. Are you sure? And I want to be able to say, well, we had this discussion, and David Bell says plastic was okay. So if just. If you could at the end there just say is okay or yeah. was it you know should be okay. It should be okay. Thanks. Thank yeah, should be whatever. Thank yeah. You. So then can I get a motion to approve the minutes as amended? Yeah, I'll move to approve the minutes as amended by right. I'll second. All right, fantastic. <laughs> there we go. All right, moving right along. So we do have the uh, public event at the Herpy Heard section. Uh, and I believe we do have someone for tonight. Oh, great. So so hi there. Um, so, Member Book, you have three minutes to address the board, uh, and please state your name and address for the board. Okay. My name's Andrew Reed. I live at 1366 Cedarwood Drive. I live in Longmont for, oh, I guess going on 10 years now. Um, I'm a high school teacher in the, in the district as well. Um, I reached out to some community members um, probably for the past couple of years. And I know there was a lot of interest among uh, kids and other people in the community about creating some kind of bike park um, in the city. And I kind of got some push, or I kind of got some feedback, I guess, from other people that have attended meetings like this, where they said kind of the, the issue is the amount of FTE that it would take maybe to maintain something like that. And I know people kind of look at places like Valmont Bike Park as like a place, but to me, Valmont Bike Park is, is 
a, a regional attraction. It's not really something that Longmont really has to strive for because there's not a whole lot of places in the country to have a bike park that great. Um, and so the like, people in the community kind of said, well, you know, that's kind of the pushback the city has given. It's like, well, it would take, man, you know, it would take uh, some F, a lot of FTE to kind of maintain it. So I'd like to maybe propose an idea to explore a solution here because um, I know there's some funding that's coming up or the city's trying to get some funding or something for developments in, in the parks and stuff coming up. So um, I would like to propose that the city explore the idea of what's called a pump track um, for the city. And so um, I don't know if you, you may be aware or not, but most of the surrounding our surrounding communities are in the, have developed them or have started to develop them. The, the latest one is Firestone. They're actually developing a bike park that has a pump track in it. Berthet has recently um, created their plans as well. I'm just gonna print these off for you. You can kind of pass those around. I kind of showed you what this the community um, what they look like and what they've been designed. Valmont obviously has one. Erie created one within the last year or two. Um, so places, even places like small little places like Berthet, um have started to develop them. Um, an asphalt or concrete pump track like you see here, to me, seems to be a good solution because the benefit of it is that they're low maintenance, so they're not like dirt jumps where you have to have people come in and constantly maintain the dirt and, and keep them built up and keep them clean and everything like that. They last longer. These um, these kind of pump tracks last longer, and they're and they're more inclusive. So it's not just it's not so it's not dirt for just bikes. It's for skateboards. It's for scooters. Basically anything on wheels. They say they're even designed for people in wheelchairs that can uh, benefit from them as well. So I think something like exploring an idea like this, I think would, for those people, and I know there were some kids in the past that uh, kind of created their own little dirt jumps in a place that was maybe not uh, allowed. And there was kind of some people wanting to, to um, see the city do something about that. Th to me, this would be a good solution um, to kind of create, uh, explore an idea like this. Um, and like I said, there, there's lots of other communities around that have already developed them or it's already are in the plans of developing. So you can look to any of the surrounding communities to kind of see what they're doing. That's great. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for bringing this. To, uh, this is news to me. I've never heard of this myself, but certainly worth uh, talking more about in the capital improvements project part of the agenda, I think, unless there's any initial reactions. That no, I'll just real quick. I'm the developer of departmental resources. I'll just give you a quick little kind of, since you showed up and took the time. Um, right now, staff, you talked about the ability to maintain. Right now, we're also in a phase of having staff to build and develop parks. So um, council and city managers have made that a priority. So we actually now in the process of getting some new help to help us push projects through. So. We'll see in our presentation that Steve will give um, that we are pretty much lined out for the next five years and have projects we have going. The positive is that some of those projects, and Steve can kick me in the table here, those projects <laughs> have potential to have some community involvement on what some of those elements may be. So um, the big picture is five to seven years out, our CIP is probably pretty well laid out as far as projects we can take on. Um, but a little window of hope in there is that we, we definitely have some opportunities in these, these parks coming up that we could probably be regional, we will be regional community for some, and we have potential for some others. Steve, you want to? Yeah, I would just add that um, I've heard over the decades about bike skills, bike uh, cycle cross. Everyone has their own favorite way to ride a bicycle. And um, we did build a uh, bike skills area at Dickens Farm Nature area that um, some people hate. I've got a lot of feedback. Some people like it too with their kids. They're out there with their striders and things. And so it does have a function. Um, could it be different? Maybe sometime in the future. But right now, we've, we've invested in that. Mm -hmm. There's also uh, council accepted a master plan for 
uh, Clover Meadows Neighborhood Park in Southwest Longmont that uh, will include a small version of a pump track. We're gonna use a company out of Missouri that um, does the prefab instead of the asphalt because it's gonna be smaller and it's more cost effective. I am interested in doing an asphalt pump track at some point in the future. Uh, I think there's a lot of potential for that type of thing. Um, in the next five years, you'll see community processes uh, re reaching out to the public for ideas for parks for Fox Meadows Neighborhood Park, which is about ninth and county line on the eastern side of town. And um, there's a possibility that something we have a, a adopt or, yeah, adopted master plan for Dry Creek Community Park. And depending on how things shake out with some of the things that council has asked staff to pursue as far as recreation centers and library annexes and things like that. We might be completing that park in the next five years. And if that's the case, it's a 15 year old master plan. I would want to ask council or at least leadership if we wanted to go back out to the public to see if some of the trends have changed in the past 15 years and we might need to amend that. So those are a couple of opportunities coming in the next uh, five years that we might be able to include something like that. Okay. I was looking, the one in Southwest Lama is fully funded and is a 40% design and will start construction, God willing, by the end of this year. Okay. With a small pump track. With a small pump track, yes. I was looking at previous our previous meetings and they said something about um, different, uh, doing different things. It was, I don't know, the word a la carte was used. Um, and I saw a list of possible things that they could use it for, and skate park was one of them. Um, you know that, but I don't know the details behind. It. I just kind of read like some of these minutes from previous. But there were people that had a conversation about all these different things that maybe the city could do. So that's kind of what they did. That's great. Thank you for coming here and, and see if we can explore that idea. Do you have students that are doing this work too? Yes. I mean, over the years, there's been lots of students that have um, talked about um, the desire for a bike park, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm just, and I've tried to tell them, I was like, well, you know, nobody's really going to build something like Belmont because, like I said, that's a regional thing. Mm -hmm. um, but there's people that have talked about it, and Longmont just has a long history of, of a lot of bike mm -hmm. Um, you know, we, I mean, we have a company here in Longmont that makes bikes, and we have lots of pro bike riders that you may not know of that come out of Longmont. So, yeah, there's a lot of interest in it, um, and something like this would be a good uh, solution that would also include other types of wheels, you know, just, yeah, just in, instead of... Uh, yeah, even the, the wheelchair students. The, 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 the feedback I get is kind of what you acknowledged was that um, the stuff that we have now is very um, beginner level. And yeah. That's kind of all that it is. Sure. And I don't know what kind of the, the new development is going to be over there, but um, we have a lot of, we have a huge range that's of right. people that ride and um, and the problem is, is it's not like a tennis court where beginners and experts use the same amount of space. And fun well, so that, that's the challenge yeah. is trying to figure out who we're catering to. I would encourage you to kind of look up that website because they, the way they design it is you see kids on Strider bikes on these, on these kind of features, what I've kind of proposed and explore the idea. Um, so all different levels. Um, so yeah, I would just, uh, I guess my question is what, what would we need to do to, to instead of it just being me, what do we need to do to make it, um, to make the, to the community, to give the community more of a voice that maybe they're interested in this too? Do, I'm not quite sure if there's a process for that. I would just continue engaging in the public processes, coming to advisory board meetings, coming and talking to council. Those are methods that residents can use. For, to, um, to try to influence um, how our work plan, we have a, I'll get to it here, but we have 30 or 40 projects that we're trying to juggle with a very small number of people. Mm -hmm. And so trying to prioritize is something that we often are, are doing on an annual basis. Right now, the direction is to work on these eight projects over the next five years that we've identified. And there are possible opportunities for um, some a bike park in one or two of those, but um, we'll just have to see. Beyond that, we 
can't just sort of drop what we're doing and say we're going to go right like that. That would be what council's record is to do. I also have one more question that's unrelated, but since I live out on kind of there by Union, um, I tried to go back and look at the conversation, but I haven't seen it. Is there any kind of progress for that path linking Union to Sandstone? Yeah, we're at, we're at design uh, about 90%. Oh, we, we hope to go to start construction by late summer. Late summer? Yeah. Okay. About a year long project. Because last time I looked it up, it said like construction 2022. Yeah, let's sell this throw out there too, so people at the table. Um, it's so hard to have to say this over and over, but 2013 flood, that, that trail was going to go under 119. The state has changed all the floodplains. So stuff that was out there that was the most logical, straightest way to go now has to be all redesigned with new. So it really turned into a new project after after that. After that. Thank you so much for, okay. for, for sharing. And if you do stick around, we, we're going to be going through those CFP projects. As a Steve's topic. I would like so. to stick around. It is my wife's birthday. Oh, well, <laughs> right. um, I have some cake for her. I'm just saying. No, that's, that's, why I didn't take, that's why I didn't take a piece. Because I got her cake that I have to eat. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Mitch. We're, we're, we just finished. Hello, oh, everybody. Do you want to stop by the corner? Oh, we do. Oh, oh, fantastic. I almost did over you. Uh, my name is Brett Sloan. Uh, I live at 2307 Tyrrhenian Drive here in Longmont. I represent the pickleball community um, and been working for quite some time with uh, David and Jeff. Uh, trying to support our club here in town. And they've done some heroic things to help us get started uh, to increase the number of uh, available courts. Uh, as you guys may know, there are six permanent courts at uh, Hobre Acres Park. Uh, that park was converted from tennis to pickleball, I don't know, maybe six or seven years ago. Um, and the pickleball community helped by uh, granting uh, almost $10,000 to the city to help them pay for that. Um, we have an opportunity maybe to do a similar thing at Clark Centennial Park. There are two tennis courts there that could be converted to six pickleball courts in the same way that Hoover was converted some time ago. The opportunity is really one to save a little money. Uh, as part of an ongoing routine maintenance thing, Collier, which is just tennis, is, uh, is due to be renovated or renewed. or And this is just, a, I guess it's on a 10-year cycle or something, and, and it's up. So uh, the vendor at some point this summer, uh, and I, David, you might be able to, I don't know what the schedule is, but they're, they're going to come here and redo the surface. And what I would propose is that, uh, uh, with a little help from us, uh, that we convert Clark Centennial, the two tennis courts there, at the same time, give this vendor a, a twofer, you know, a little volume discount uh, that they would convert in the same way they did uh, Hover Acres many years ago. We do that at Clark Centennial. Um, and we're, we're trying to do our part to help. The, the problem right now is uh, David does not have a budget large enough right now to, to do this. So we, um, our, the community here in town, uh, we're fundraising and we've, we told David that we'll we'll contribute twenty thousand to uh, to this effort to get it uh, to get this this done. Um, but I, I'm a little concerned just looking ahead. Um, what is he going to have to do to, to really make this happen? I'm not sure uh, twenty is going to be enough ultimately to do this. Um, so I, I come here to you guys who are have the the ability to influence the budget uh, that you fully fund. Uh, David, give him, give him a little extra money. We're, we're going to need it to, uh, 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 to really pull this off. Um, we're not going to stop at 20. We're going to go and get as much as we can. We have uh, a whole bunch of things lined up. We have uh, uh, some of the pros are coming to Longmont. We're going to do some uh, clinics. Uh, Dave, the Badger Weinbach, 10-time uh, U.S. Uh, Open national champion in pickleball is coming uh, May 8th to do a clinic or April 8th, excuse me. Um, we've got uh, Scott Moore coming uh, May 22nd. We're gonna do another clinic to try to, you know, just 
cobble together uh, money so that uh, we can get these courts converted. Um, I had somebody suggest to me that uh, the way to think about this is uh, this is a, uh, a relatively low cost with a very high benefit to the pickleball community um, that we could, we could really step up. Uh, that would make uh, that park, uh, Clark Centennial, six permanent courts, and we've, we've got some temporary courts lined out there on the pieces of concrete that are out there. There was a skate park um, that had, wasn't used at all, and we've now converted it. We, we put down gorilla tape lines and, uh, and put down, uh, we've got temporary nets put out there. There's a roller hockey rink that's right there close to it. We put down, again, with gorilla tape, uh, we put down uh, four more courts and um, six permanent with those eight temporary, we could do a lot of really neat things uh, in, in town with that. Um, I, I just ask, be as supportive as you can. You know, we, we're doing our part to really push this along. Will you join us? I guess that's my pitch. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I do have to say, you know, David and his guys have been super. Uh, they, they've, uh, I guess they're scraping, what, what was the term? Budget dust? <laughs> um, and it's like and away. <laughs> that term's never going away. No. Um, and just so you, do you mind if I just keep the, no, the, please. The, the board has a little bit better understanding? You know, we have been working with this, this group, and they have shown a commitment to try to help us leverage funds. So we really are pulling projects and contract dollars and fertilizer dollars and we're working to make this happen so um, with them bringing dollars in it's going to help us really reset that a little bit too because to make this happen we really are having to uh, push her up somewhere on those little bit of fungible dollars that we have to um, try to make this happen um, Steve is also including an extra court over at his two extra courts over at Eno Gallo um, and then in the kind of projects we're pushing through with it with council's direction, Harold's direction, um, really is to some additional pickleball courts out to complement the tennis courts at, at um, Quail. So longer term though. The one thing I would remember is is be careful using the term permanent. Uh, Clark Park is up for a park full park renewal sometime in 2027 or 28. And like the, the roller hockey court will likely be scraped with that project sort of thing because it doesn't get used. That trend has gone away. It was from the nineties. Well, we, we, we did look at the it entire is park. Used now uh, right. so we're we're gonna we're gonna we've got it busy right now. Not that we would displace pickleball. We might look a little bit differently. So just okay. kind of thinking permanency, we do uh, update our parks on. Yeah. Well, we, we uh, you know, we we just got gorilla tape on the uh, on the roller hockey rink, right, and yeah. temporary net. So uh, we'll make it better if anything. Put that out. What, I'm what, what is surfacing costs for six courts? I'm going from memory. I think Timber said it was like ten thousand a tennis court. I think it's more than that. He's got numbers back and kind of blew all our budgets. Uh, it's so much of his numbers, but it is. <clears throat> yes, it's, it's like one company owns all. The we actually found two now, and, and just to probably update for a pickleball community, and this is it. Um, we got one group that's willing to come into a full resurface of the tennis courts areas, but on the. Um, skate park and the roller hockey because we are not going to turn those into strictly pickleball because we do know there are people who still use skate parks, not skate parks, but roller hockey. Um, so those would be painted lines with temporary nets. So the one company wouldn't do the, the partial and the other one said that they're, they're, those are just too high for the full conversion. So we will have, I think it's four courts of the Rockies and Reiner coming in to, to do those conversions. All right, I'm going to check again. No other public to be heard? Yeah. This yeah, time for room? Oh, there is. Fantastic. Ethan Matthews, Jerry Buttonrock. Do y'all remember the climate action recommendations report that was approved in 2020? Your board critiqued that report for lacking consideration of nature based solutions such as tree planting. And last year, Longmont only planted 226 trees, which is below the average urban tree re replacement rate. So I wanted to ask you all to evaluate the feasibility of planting more trees in Longmont. If there is indeed a climate emergency, then it's hard to understand why the city is not planting more trees and not prioritizing that. So I published a letter in the Longmont Leader last week, 
and this sort of outlines a very broad overview of vision for planting more trees. So it'd be great if y'all would uh, just evaluate the feasibility of that and whether it's possible to plant more trees in Walmart. I have a letter if you want to pass it around. Oh, great, oh, thank great. you. Be helpful. Let me and the link there, it is correct the way it's spelled there with only one T, which is a typo, but that's the way that it is. <laughs> you appreciate that. Yeah, of course. So I think we'll, we'll have time to discuss this during the items from, from the, the board for sure. What's that? There's a section later on in the agenda where we can definitely dig into this more. <clears throat> if you can. What time Do you have any other uh, items, uh, well, if, comments? If, I think if we're going to talk about it, it should be now. That way, he, he doesn't have to stay for the whole meeting. That'd be great. Yeah. Do you have any? Yeah, I, I can give a little bit. Again, this, you know, I have seen this in the past. I've been working with our forestry. Um, our city forests are on, on these issues too. City, you know, Longmont is a is a tree city, um, and we definitely have been since our foundation as a community in our parks planting trees. That public space really is getting tight for us to manage more plantings, and it really comes into how do we work more with the community. We're working with at least not block in that group to look at where some potential areas are that. Uh, potential heat islands where they don't have the same canopy and a lot of those are areas where we don't have the influence of the public land in those in those areas so we are looking at other ways that we may be able to try to work with those communities um, but right now um, the tree canopy we have within our park system really is on a maintenance program more than a planting program within the parks and open spaces that that we have so it really is trying to figure out how we would have more influence over those private spaces. And I would add that we are not the only ones in town that plants trees on public property. Every developer that comes in has to plant trees along the roads, the public roads that they, um, in addition to the trees they put on the private property in the parking lots and around the homes and things like that. So there is additions to the city's overall tree can canopy on a regular basis outside of what we plan. I don't have a number for you though, that'd be impossible. Um, do you think about Planting next to ash trees, is that something that we're doing? Because that would, I mean, our canopy is going to be reduced by So fit. we actually have a replacement. So that is one of the pieces that we have right now is we have a, a general ash board budget that mm -hmm. we have covered so that as we are removing trees or replacing trees, and we're doing that replacement in cycles. So we didn't go through and just cut down all those susceptible ash so we could plant appropriate trees. It's just getting harder with the other piece too that is a real challenge is planting trees that are appropriate today and trees that are appropriate for a climate future that we're trying to predict. Um, Ken Wickland, a former city forester, always said it was hard being a tree in Colorado um, and it's it harder every year as we, we try to do this. But um, we have a forestry group that's absolutely committed to you know maintaining our forest canopy as it is, replacing those trees that go away, and working with our sustainability group to see if there's opportunities. Um, you know, Steve mentioned those areas that the developers plant. Once they plant, they really aren't ours. We don't maintain those areas and stuff. So again, it's how does the city get more engaged in trying to, to work that North Longmont area. One of the areas is, I think, those heat maps that definitely um, has opportunities. Do you know how many trees are in Longmont and what the replacement rate is? So I know how many city trees are that we manage and maintain. I don't have the number here. Brett definitely has those. We have... Um, an informaticist that really helps with, with that and looking at how many trees we're moving because of the ash and then also how many we're replacing. We also have a program that a developer comes in that we have a tree mitigation fund. So if they develop a property, remove trees that are of quality, then we have them put those dollars in there so we can then plant trees as well. But I actually, when, when I saw, I think it may have been your letter about a week ago, I, I did ask Brett to um, draft a response to this, so hopefully have some here. So I have your information, so I can have you back to you as well. The yeah. city website says the city of Long Longmont Forestry Services cares for over twenty one thousand publicly owned trees. If you go to the website, it talks about their maintenance standards and things like that. So you might be able to get some more information there. 
Let's also they show true, tree equity, which I covered in the letter, which is the issue that some neighborhoods don't have many trees, right. and other neighborhoods have lots of trees. So that'd be one thing to consider in placement trees to put them in neighborhoods that don't have many trees. It, it, again, I, I appreciate it too. That's what I said. That's what that shows up. And so that mapping that Lisa's doing of where those areas are, the problem is it just becomes how do we work with those communities? We don't have those public spaces there. Um, one of the things we do have is the arbitrary tree sale where we give trees at discounted cost to our community, hoping that people can put them into their community. We're doing work with um, individuals that may not have the resources to pick up, so we're delivering trees and even helping with planting in some of those areas. Today, <clears throat> today the lottery was ran today. Um, tree sale. What about tree plenish? That's free trees. That's free trees, it's free planting, not $200 trees, it's free trees. I mean, Centaur I Centaurus High School planted 500 trees last year in my high school, so that's what I know. Um, so, yeah, who bought the them. trees? Everybody. They bought them. They were, they were like 10, to, they were sliding scale, but they were like 5 to $15 for nice trees. And then kids like from uh, Fairview, Centaurus, they they just went out and planted them all. Like, it, yeah. it really, there's... So it's more equity than a $200 tree, yeah. Right, there, there's also a, a piece in there that is our forestry group looks at that. There's some, I'll just be honest, there's some feel-good pieces with that, but those trees need irrigation, they need maintained, it needs, for us, that's gonna be drip mm -hmm. irrigation. Trees don't grow in Colorado unless they're got their feet wet in a ditch or a creek. Mm -hmm. So it takes that, so the survival rate of those trees um, is often very, very low. So it really is trying to get, again, the right tree um, in the right place with the right irrigation system. I can see that. So I, I know you understand this. So it's, it's a little more complicated than just going plant a tree. So that's the yeah. thing that we're working on long term, though, is how we try, try to hit some of this equity piece, I think, for sure, is what we're, we're looking at. Thanks. Any other comments on this topic? Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, thank you. Okay, again, last time. <laughs> Any more public events to be heard? Right? Look around. We'll do a full 360. Yeah. Okay. Three in one night. Three in one night, right? Yeah, pretty good run. I, I think it's awesome. It's, it is awesome, for sure. Did you have a Okay, let's move on to the old business. Uh, let's look at the future recreation facility update. I think Jeff, you're going to give us a quick yep. on this. This will be a quick one. The so we sent out the survey that um, when we talked last time that there was going to be a scientific survey, which was done, but there was also a general uh, public uh, survey as well, and those all ended on the eighth, which was last week. The report is scheduled to be presented to City Council next Tuesday on the 21st. At that meeting, we believe Council will give, and help me if I'm wrong, um, us more direction on uh, moving forward with all the projects, some of the projects, or none of the projects. And based on that direction, um, we have requested that um, assistant City Managers Joni Marsh and Sandy Cedar and as well as uh, Becky Doyle come and speak with you about what the role can be for CRAB as we move forward. Um, but th they all felt that was premature to do that until after we've had the results of the survey and again direction from Council. So that's my report. <laughs> A lot to come after that, though. Um, it's uh, we'll know where we stand, and and then Ben, uh, in our next topic, will kind of bring you up to speed with uh, where we're at with the feasibility study, which leads right into that uh, coming work. So. so we meet again in April, and how much more will have happened, or are we? Still in the loop, or will we be out of the loop by the time the council decides things? Oh no, the kid, it's next Tuesday when council will get the survey results. They, right. The results go directly to them, 
they hopefully will give us direction that evening and then that will help staff to start working on what the next steps are. Okay, and you'll be done by the time we meet again, or do we get oh, the no. help that was going No, because I'm thinking this is an April through June, June ah, process. Thank you. Um, we, uh, the, the main timeline we have is that council has to place items on the ballot in August. Um, and uh, so I'm assuming we'll do that work through June have presentations in July so that council can make their final determination of what goes on the ballot before okay. the box. So for this board, April and May meetings yep. are when we have a chance to influence something. Maybe June-ish. Yeah, it's going to be getting kind of late right. in June. Got it. But, um, you know, and it, it probably won't be just at this meeting. We'll, uh, no, 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 but yeah. as a board, that's yes, our shot. That, that will be our shot, okay. yes. Any other questions? I'll just say I heard from a couple of neighbors organically about the survey. They asked if I knew about it and had taken it. So it seems like it got out really well to residents. Yeah. We'll fill in more of it. Yeah, good. Great. All right, let's uh, move on to uh, the master plan feasibility study process update. That's me. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, so in the meantime, <laughs> well, while that's occurring, we are also, as you all know, um, working, well, let's say feverishly, yeah. as, yeah. We, as we get started here on the feasibility study towards the uh, Recreation Center. Um, we did meet with Perkins Will, um, specifically Chris Costellic, on Friday to um, kind of map out what the timeline. They know that it's tight, that we need to have this in on June 15th. Is our, is our target time to have it done. Um, so will be putting in place the dates that we need to hit. A lot of this work is going to start in the next couple weeks and will be through the April, first couple weeks of May. Um, we don't have all of that mapped out yet, but we will. Um, this group will have a chance, certainly, to have feedback on that. Um, and I, I submitted a packet item here that included the scope that you've already seen in our RFP, also included action items for staff that we've gone through. So just to give you some of the examples of things we'll be working on. Um, with this, the priority will be the feasibility study. We have that done um, in June. And master plan with it has, is less of a priority that that may take somewhat longer um, to complete that. So, um, yeah, anything else we have missed? Any questions? Will you will they be looking at some kind of indoor ice facility as part of the feasibility study? <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to answer that, honestly. <laughs> it if that is something that the community wants to have included, absolutely. I don't know how to interpret that. Staff will not be pushing ice. So even if the, the board explicitly expressed interest when we had a discussion of having ICE included in the feasibility study? We would, we would ask those questions, we'd evaluate it. I'm not gonna say no, but there are other things that I can't really talk about with um, an ice rink in Longmont that if that uh, group move forward with the ice rink, I would say that the city of Longmont would not need to build an ice rink. Right, but wouldn't it still make sense to assess it in feasibility? I mean, just as a piece of a potential? No. You don't just, think so? No, just simply because if, if, again, that group would choose to do it, there would be no reason for us to evaluate it. But that's an if if they choose to do it, right? We don't know. Correct. It it will be it all considered in, until that group makes a decision, which could be soon. Two weeks. Do you want to? I, 
we, we need, and we need to <laughs> stop right there with ice. I'll talk about anything else, <laughs> but I, I need to be careful on what I say. I just speaking for myself, and I don't, you know, other board members can weigh in. I feel like we were pretty clearly interested in considering that as part of what was go forward. So if you, I mean, there may be other circumstances, but it seems odd to not analyze it if we not if something is not guaranteed. Hey Jeff, do you want to speak to how the previous feasibility study played ice out, and maybe some of that data might still be relevant? Well, I remember the, it being the, quite the ice actually ice. was going to do better than the the. 50 meter pool, right? right. Um, and and so that financially was the, the least of of the ongoing operational issues. It again, we'll look into it, Paige. But but again, if someone else is going to build ice, it makes no sense that we build ice as well and both be unsuccessful. So, yes, I, I go ahead. Sorry. Um, so, in two weeks, we'll know, but then it would be too late to be in a feasibility study question mark, or would that if they decide not? I, I get why you don't want to say if we said, Oh, the city's thinking about building ice, then that group might do that, it might go, Oh, well, we don't need to do it because the city's going to do it. So, I get that. But if they decide, oh, you know, we just can't do it, then could we put it in the feasibility study after that? Yes. Question? Yes. Okay. That sounds better. Awesome. Scott, sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, can we just bring this, put a note to bring this up in April? This is something the feasibility study is still going on in April. But let's make sure we follow up on Jeff's. And I'm not trying to be negative about ICE. No, no, I am trying to be. Hopeful that this other group does ice, which means our resources for the city can be put into other things. Mm -hmm. And we have made it clear that as far as we know, you guys want input in the feasibility study. Yes. We know that, and that's important to us. And we've made that clear as the consultant, too. That's, that's a big part of what we want to have happen. Mm -hmm. Public input and the board's input. Any other additional sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Sam, any other additional comments or questions on the master plan feasibility study process? Okay. Uh, let's check them right along. Uh, moving on to new business. And now we're gonna talk about the 2023 capital improvement projects slash the 2024 process. And I forget who's taking this one. Why don't you Steve, take it off one? Steve's gonna take it off, Steve. but I, I am going to um, Kind of set some parameters. So I, I think one things that we've been talking about here, you've heard us talk about the, the eight and five project. We've kind of been watching council or Harold talking. Um, there's a desire to focus on some of these projects that haven't been done in a while. And council member Waters, myself, have probably talked to the same community over and over and saying, yes, it's funded. Yes, we'll get to it. Yes, it's in line. And we just haven't got there because there always are other things going on. And that can be things like I started off with from, you know, the project managers working with the, the flood to COVID issues that, that came up. Um, but I'm gonna help set those sidebars that we're staying pretty close to true to what is on that list of capital projects for the, at least the next five years. So Steve, does that it? Yeah, that's, work that's fine. So um, if I'm talking about anything, you don't know what I'm talking about, just raise your hand. I have Google Earth up so I can show you. So, uh, work plan, um, sorry. this is something that, that Harold sort of went in and, and updated for us. The blue projects are the eight projects that have been identified to be in the eight and five. So Clover Meadows Neighborhood Park, which is the board um, recommended approval of the master plan a couple of years ago, three years ago for that park, and that's at 40% design. Fox Meadows Neighborhood Park, which is the one that we've been waiting for for a long time in the east part of town. And, sorry, Dry Creek Community Park Synthetic Turf Fields. Those, that's the transition of the existing nine acre fields at uh, Dry Creek Community Park 
It's the, where the turf is underperforming <coughs> to install synthetic turf and lights out there. Um, we put in, I think I told you last month, we put an RFP out for the first two projects. Did not receive any, um, any acceptable bids. And so I rewrote the project, increasing the budget for those two projects, as well as adding the Dry Creek fields to increase the overall budget, trying to attract larger, more regional or, or, or national firms rather than just the local ones. Um, we have a meeting Thursday morning to find out about the status of when that RFP will go out, but I would expect that RFP to be put out hopefully by the end of next week. I uh, can't speak for our purchasing manager, but, but she knows it's hot on our agenda, and so I, I, I think that she'll be able to meet that. <coughs> um, so that's for the first three projects, and that's something that, they'll again, that's for design build. I would anticipate seeing... Uh, Clover Meadows doesn't need any public process, so we can go right to design on that and hopefully start construction later this fall. Fox Meadows will have to have a public process. The consulting team we hire have to do a public process for us and gain public input. Um, I'm also working with the Fox Hills Country Club because we have an agreement to take raw water out of a pond on their property. And so uh, I was out at the Country Club last week talking with their operational folks and how uh, we might do construction out there. We don't need any existing or any new easements. We do need to coordinate the club. Did you have your hand up, Dr. Water? Um, so I would expect the public process to be this summer, get the design going, and hopefully construction starting by Christmas. And then the synthetic turf fields is going to take a little bit more time because we have to do some, some extensive floodplain analyses and the impacts of synthetic turf in a regional detention facility. Um, so that's going to take some specialty work with, uh, with the consultant that we hire to figure out what we can and can't do as far as how we can mitigate potential pollutants into Dry Creek long term. That will be a challenge for that project. Um, I don't have a time frame yet as far as when that will start construction, but design will be. The idea is that we're going to hire a firm that's going to be able to handle designing all three of these concurrently. And some might get ahead of the others and make, make, make sense to start construction. But that's the idea that we're starting once we sign a contract, we're kicking off all three projects, not staggering them. Okay. The other five projects are Sandstone Ranch Community Park, Phase 4, which is another three ball fields south of the ball fields that are existing. Um, there's also some playground replacements and ADA improvements that need to be done in the existing infrastructure that I'm going to roll into that project. Um, Quail Campus Master Plan improvements. Um, David alluded to that before as far as pickleball there. We currently have a master plan that was adopted by City Council in 2009, eight or nine, uh, that shows an ICE facility uh, on the north side of that, uh, that uh, campus, community park. Um, we're going to be going back to the public at some point this mid-year to gauge the interest. Of, we can't afford an ICE facility at this point in time. That's not what we're, we won't be pursuing that at that location, especially at this point in time. So um, when talking about changing the use, the proposed use of that master plan from ice to pickleball to try to address some of the uh, pickleball concerns that the community has, has uh, offered over the past several years. And we've seen different, community, different communities around the country are combining their court sports all in a single location. And so we, since we have the quail tennis complex, the 10 courts there having a comparable um, pickleball facility of some sort uh, makes sense. So that would be something that would come to the board as we're engaged in the public um, about that. But then going moving forward and, and building those improvements, completing the Quail Pampas Master Plan. Museum is currently working on an expansion that we're coordinating as well. So there's several moving parts on that community park right now. But um, we that will be a, a future RFP once we get through the... the uh, Master plan update, a future RFP for design build, and I don't have a time frame in that because it really depends on how we onboard people that I can only do so much. So I can just, as we bring people on and get people here, we can start assigning some more of these RFPs. And so, you know, five years is our end goal. We don't have to wait five years. So we're trying to get moving, moving as quickly as possible. Dry Creek Community Park phase two, you would have seen that in the survey, took the survey for the, uh, the potential um, recreation culture tax. Um, that is also a project that we're trying to get in Project 8.5 outside of the master plan shows a recreation center and an outdoor pool. That would not be included in phase two 
that the balance of the project would be including a couple ball fields. Right now, the master plan says a couple ball fields, outdoor handball, racquetball, a maintenance facility, a sledding hill, uh, realigning Dry Creek to, it's very braided to make it a more healthy creek and then bringing people down into the water seasonally to interact with water. That was something the community really wanted back when we did the master plan. As I mentioned, it's a 15 year old master plan. The question the leadership and council will be, do we need to re-engage the public to see if some of those things we thought back in 2008 were still what the community wants. And so I would support that, that a quick public meeting might not be a bad thing, but we'll talk about that. But again, that's not out right now, that's future. St. Bray Greenway phase 12, which is the extension from Golden Ponds West underneath Airport Road, connecting towards Peloponnes and the Boulder County properties. Just had a meeting a couple hours ago with the landowner representative. We're still trying to get the land, but we think we're on a <coughs> good path to hopefully have that land in our possession in the next 60 days. We just blink much. I think that's what we're hoping to get. So we'll, um, and so we'll have that land. Again, don't have a time frame as far as when that will be put out for RFP. We do also have 40% design for that project as well. Uh, so we know generally where the trail is going to go. And then the last project is Eden Reservoir Loop Trail that um, is already master planned essentially. We know where the trail is going to go. Uh, we're waiting for our transportation folks to fund a project for County Road 66, or, I'm sorry, 26, to move that road out of the way so the trail can go outside the fee area of the southwest corner. Here, I'll just, since I have it up. So here, the loop's going to go around, you know, like this. Obviously, we, we're trying to fit a trail between the road and the fee area through here. So this road needs to be moved out to the southeast through here. It's in the uh, work plan for our engineering folks. It hadn't been a prior funded priority, because, but because this project is being included in the 8-5, we've asked them to show that funded in this Current CIP, I don't know where they're gonna show that it's funded, so that project will sort of impact the timing of the Union Loop Trail, but we are working with our engineering folks to try to move that project forward so we can complete the whole loop trail. That's the next, that's the nexus of our five-year CIP. That's where we are from right now to 2027, 28. That being said, we have other projects that we are working on. Uh, Affolt and park upgrades are done Lua Mill Park Renewal is ongoing. Uh, if you drive out there, you'll notice that my contractor has started back up again. They've been delayed by weather and things. Uh, playground equipment going in later this week. Uh, lights are up, although not working because we don't have a switchboard yet because we're waiting for that. That's our switch gear. So anyway, that we're uh, targeting end of May for completion of this project. And I believe that um, Carmen, whomever, is planning a, a grand opening for August. So we'll let, we'll let you know when, if and when that gets done. Sangler Park, our new project manager, Stephanie Cooper, who um, might come to next month's meeting, but she hired, we hired her to replace, replace Kathy, and she just started this last week. Um, she's going to take that on and start getting that uh, construction going here because the plans are already done by Kathy before she left. Master plan update is on hold. These bridges are TBD. They need to be done. We're not sure who's going to do them. It depends. Dry Creek 2 relocation, or I'm sorry, Dog Park 2 relocation is on hold at this point in time. There's some strategy discussions being held at the leadership level that, that make that project might not be what it is now. It might be changing that project. So we had money in this year's CIP for land acquisition and money next year for design and construction. We'll relook at that, those dollars as we make some decisions in the next couple months as far as how we're going to move forward with Dog Park in the city. Um, the restroom. Um, I'll have quotes by the end of the month from contractors to get that done. You'll see construction starting out there this summer for the restaurant at Kensington Park. You know, Gallo, again, as I mentioned, 100% uh, drawings are expected to be by April 10th. I would like to see construction starting around Memorial Day out there. Um, I've been, had a lot of really good luck in the past week or so with some gas lines. The gas company is being very helpful in relocating gas lines that we're going to adversely impacted the structure of the park. What was the date again, Steve? Repeat the uh, construction by... For, for Nino Gallup? Yeah. Nino Starting Nino. construction, hopefully by Memorial Day. That's, that's the plan. You know, again, we put things out for bid. If we don't get good bidders, that delays things for months. I, I can't control that. But I'll have the project out and ready to go by then. Spring Gulch 2, Phase 3, 
as um, as mentioned, they're going to be bidding that here this spring summer um, for construction, and uh, that's going to be about a 12 month construction period. The biggest part of that is the railroad underpass, but our engineering staff has had a great conversations and coordination with the. Exactly uh, that word is that? Yeah. Oh. North Sandstone. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's between Sandstone and Union. Just because we had someone talk about the other end of this, this is really. It's one that it kind of ends in a concrete path right now. Yeah, okay. yeah it'll, it'll go from Sandstone, it'll go north where they're building the new climbing collective building, north underneath the railroad tracks and up to Union Reservoir Crossing and County Road 26. Um, and then RSVP is, is ongoing at this point in time. Uh, oh, and same thing for phase 13 is, you know, outside of Project 85. I'm working on the ones that I talked about Gallo, Lou Miller, so many others, Danielle is working on same frame phase 13, and she's almost at, if, I think by the end of this month, she's a 60% design. Yes. So she's making good progress on that. And it's been a, it's been a challenge for her. There's a lot, of, a lot of challenges. And 12 is west, like you said. 12, 13, is, 13, is, 13 is from Sandstone Ranch to St. Frame State Park. We were originally going, planning to go underneath the highway at the St. Frame because, as David mentioned, floodplains change. You see that would not allow us to do that. So now we're building a separate pedestrian underpass just for the... Uh, trail users to connect in and they'll be uh it'll connect in sort of to the south west corner of St. Frank State Park. Five and a half right there where that light is at. But again now we have another HOA and private property owner, so it, it's more negotiation. Yeah we'll, we'll be doing underpass in here and then bringing the trail along this uh north side of the um state park connecting to the trail right here. So it'll be a little bit different than what we expected but Still be a great trail extension. Uh, and then, when, you know, as David has mentioned in past meetings with Adams Derrick, you know, a friend of mine just bought this house right here. <laughs> just saw the paper this weekend. He's an engineer, local engineer, he's a lucky guy. He's a great piece of property now. Um, but yeah, a trail connecting St. Frank State Park from this northwest corner up back in the Union would be a future project. In fact, less than future. Yeah, we, we just um, threw Chip and Steve may be able to tell us that there's a transportation tax that comes out regionally. We have um, Phil Greenwald, who works on pulling those together, he just got us almost $2 million to help with a project going from the Union Reservoir out to the state park there. So this this is where Steve talked about we're coming out here with our property. This all is state park. And then Phil has $2 million. He actually had a design done. And it's like 7.5 to do this. So right now we have a 10% match on, on that. So it's some pretty good leveraging of our funds to make that happen. You might um, just mention that that's where we were on our field oh, trip. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, good, good point. Yeah. Last year for those yeah. there. Yeah, and again, just these all came together. <clears throat> I haven't sent a big memo to, to council or anything yet because the family was really getting tight on wanting this project wrapped up. It's been a long project. The um, yeah, the they, Adam, Adam family they they definitely have been working on this for a long time and needed to close for personal reasons. Um, Boulder County was partners on, on this. They couldn't make that closing deadline, so we covered the whole thing. Last week, we was close with Boulder County. They paid us $2 million for a conservation easement over the property. So um, the whole deal's done. We have another $2 million back in our bank account that we can help put towards trail projects and more acquisitions now, too. On the base 13 alignment, I figured out the landfill side of it when we did the field trip. There's no yeah. question about that whole side. It looks like it's going to be up here on top of the landfill. Yeah, behind those behind those deals, behind these businesses. Okay, that's that's the most effective route there. Yeah. And then sort of bridge over. So there's a bridge here, and then we come underneath the highway somewhere around here. I don't think it's right at the light on. There's a new uh, self storage facility right there. That's, yeah, that's again the self storage folks working, working very, very well with us. They're cool. getting some easements. The people who have that big communication tower will not talk with us, so um, we're having to do some creative. Bridges because there's just enough drop. We're gonna to have to make a bridge there just because they will not return a phone call. Um, so, will our trip be pushed down or they lose this space if the new trail goes in? Well, well, our trip is not annual. Yeah. That, that, that's their lease is annual. Oh, we'll, we'll build our trail and we'll figure out what to do. We, we, we don't There'll be public safety to be the thing. Right. Yeah, there's something. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We're not even confirming with them that the arch release will remain. We don't, we don't know yet. We'll have to figure that out. Um, anyway, back to the work plan. And then, so that's what we're working on. That's what we're currently working on. But as we onboard new staff members, David gave an update last month about new term positions that we're trying to get filled. We have 
Um, Stephanie, that filled. Um, Kathy, Danielle is becoming more of a, hopefully becoming more of a senior project manager. And um, we hope to hire a manager of the project managers. That's something Dave is trying to fill, so we don't drive him crazy, we drive somebody else crazy, and then, <laughs> and then, and then, then they can talk to him. Um, so hopefully we'll get those applications for the two term positions as well as that manager in the next couple, three weeks, get that out for So yeah, that's all, just to get an update for this group, we're, Harold has signed up on all three of those positions now, so now it's just working through HR to get us out there. So really for this group, that a lot of times it's just been Steve, especially after Kathy leaving, um, will have a full complement plus three additional positions to her term to kind of line up with these, and then a, a manager for that group. So I think it'd be, Great for the community to be able to get some of those dollars that have been sitting there out and turn them into actual physical. And that's the only way eight to five works. I can't do those eight to five. Exactly. Just don't work. <laughs> um, but there is also obviously future projects. These are projects that we've identified that Prab has the in your purview. If you want us to prior try to prioritize some of these, put it this way: with four, five project managers. We're going to be able likely to handle, handle Project 8.5 as well as some ancillary project every year. We still need to do park renewals. Our infrastructure doesn't go away. So that program will continue to be. Uh, we met last week and are working with finance, I think, tomorrow, next day. But we met last week and it's looking like the next park renewals are going to be uh, based on need is Thompson Park, Shelters and Playground, Roosevelt Playground, and Hover Park in general. Um, those are the next three, four, uh, and then we have three trail segments also that we want to try to address. So that's where we're, our, we'll be doing that work as well, but there might be some opportunities for some other projects. We have to look at that, you know, and if we show it as unfunded in 2027, maybe we can figure out if we have the bandwidth and then show it funded next year. You know, we'll have to strategize how we approach council about that, but they have been very clear they want us to focus on these eight projects. And I think if you see right now, with Steve doing his eight and five, those three projects he has, he's still doing you know, Gala, which is outside of that. He's doing So we do think if we get people in this process moving the way that our procurement specialist feels it can move, that they'll be able to pick up one other project, plus play maybe we can go as well, so. Yeah, and so some of these Montgomery Farms, everyone knows what that is, that's at the 66 and County Line. Sisters Master Plan. Sisters is right next to you know Gallo. We don't have a master plan for that. Can you show them the map? Sure. I think that helps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, let's see. Montgomery is this this whole big thing here. Mm -hmm. That's a future community park down roughly to the power lines, and this is future natural nature area, open space style um, land. Sisters is let's see, let's see now, over here. Here is Nino you know, Gallo. This is Sisters. It's a 70 acre parcel that we own that will be future community park. This one's going to be a challenge because in order for this park to work, transportation is going to need to fund Martin Street coming down through here and Pike Road coming over to here to make that, that transportation pattern. That's not a priority for them. In our transportation system, that is not, it's not serving much of anybody. We're going to have to relook at that internally before we really jump on that project because I don't know when a, a road that just abuts a park in open space is going to become a priority for our transportation system. So we'll have to have those conversations. Yes, Dave. Do you know currently which areas have the least access to a park? Like the least sort of the oldest neighborhood access? in Longmont without. Access to a neighborhood park is countryside village right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that would maybe argue for that to get more attention. Yeah, sure. But yeah, you know, there is a community park right here, right. and then there's this this uh, you know gallery right there. Oh. So listen. So did you say one for the kids yeah. at countryside village? Martin's going to split the park. No, Martin no, will be the eastern boundary, boundary of the park. Could it just be accessed with a, a cycling trail and a bus stop? 
Instead of Martin and the bus well, came but I could have No, yeah. and a bus stop park. on the other side of it. Like, well, there's already a bus stop at uh, Countryside Village. Right. So, we're, we would not build apartments with bike access. We would, because this is a community park, this will be sandstone ranches, we have ball fields, lights, soccer fields, that sort of stuff. That is what it's programmed to be. And so, it's going to need the infrastructure to handle that traffic on a regular basis, just as sandstone and, and card makers and other community parks do. So that'll be a challenge. Um, completion of Quail Campus, I mentioned that one, Garden Acres Master Plan, that one's, oh, uh, there's still another phase of Garden Acres um, in the southwest corner, uh, splash pad and another playground. I don't see that one coming up anytime real soon because we just renewed it five years ago and, and people are pretty happy with it as is. Langham Park is a master plan that we haven't put any improvements towards. Same with, Sp well, Spangler has some improvements that the master plan that we haven't done anything with. I would say those last two are kind of in piecemeal, so there's never been like a feel of completion for those neighborhoods. Right, you know, those parks were built 30 years ago, 40, 50 years ago, actually, because it's not definitely more than 30, probably closer to 40, 50. And so in the past decade or so, park development staff, not me, went to his neighborhoods and engaged them. And so what would you like to see this park build out look like? We did that, but we don't have any funding or any, we haven't assigned any dollars toward that, but we do know what the community vision is, was at that time. Were people 30 years ago? No, this was done more recently. Oh, okay. Yeah, this was done more recently. Paul was doing this stuff um, later in her career. Oh, okay. And so I, I'm not as up to speed as far as what they look like, but I generally know. <laughs> um, but the, these is, this is where we need to balance Park renewal, new projects, and updating existing projects. So it's just, this is, this is why we're having this conversation. We want to hear from Brad. We want to hear what your priorities are so that can help us influence our um, planning. And this does not have to happen tonight. You can still hit me next month and I'll have plenty of time to rearrange things. But we really would like to get your feedback on this as always. The AHI trail connection is the one in uh, West Longmont. Um, Right here, uh, this is Dry Creek Community Park, right here. There's a Greenway Trail. We would like to get an underpass underneath North 75th and connecting to the AHI. Uh, we, that's, if you remember back in January, was it, when Danielle presented to the board, the request from Boulder County, this was one of the requests, one of the long-term requests, connecting up to uh, Recreation and Clover Basin Reservoir and down to Lagerman, so that's that's on our list, but again, no, uh, no not prioritized as of yet. Steve, what's, what's AHI about? AHI is a board county open space, their name. Okay. I, I don't know. So to, the west, to the west 75th there? Yes, okay. yes. I don't even know what AHI stands for. I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always it's been the AHI open space. It's property. Right, right, right. It's right. a LLC. Uh, Clover Basin Reservoir, I talked about that. Same with AHI, connecting up the Clover River Reservoir to the north. You know, trail connection to Terry Lake is really long term, but we were just talking about it last week. Oops. I think they call it what is it the Blue Sky Trail? Oh, okay. the one just there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That Blue Sky Trail it basically is a full section almost of that goes around around Active Ag and stuff out there. So. Yeah, you can get around Lagerman too. It's a, yeah, it's a good the open sky up there. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, it's beautiful. Um, so Terry Lake up here. No, no, that's it right there. Terry Lake's right there. Yes, thank you. It is a church. Yeah. So we. Fill me in, David. I'm going to tread into water territory here. Yeah. We own majority share of Terry Lakes, yes. and do we own County, Boulder County, and Longmont own majority. And then do we we don't own the recreational rights yet, but we think yeah. we could get them if we wanted to. Right. Okay. So we do our our long term Greenway plan does show connection up to Terry Lake. There's a future neighborhood park that's going to be going up here when this neighborhood develops, and so that is on our list. We do have an easement secured. I got I don't know a lot of, a lot of years ago right here to connect from the trail over to 287, thinking that as this develops, we'll have a side path along 287 and we can be start looping. This is a challenge through here with this existing neighborhood and the church trying to thread a trail through there. So that's a backup. But county, this is county open space, I believe right here. Yep. And the county is on board with this, this vision of trying to get a trail up to Terry Lake and whether we go around or not, who knows? We haven't done any study of that yet, but that is a long-term goal for us. Um, Adams Dairy Trail, David alluded to. And then we have uh, 
Yeah, McCall Lake Management Plan. We have several water bodies. Dan Wolford and Danielle alluded to this before. We have several water bodies where we allow recreation, but we don't really have a management plan as far as what they're supposed to be doing. It's really, Danielle's working her way down the slope. She's starting to button rock and she's going to work her way down, hopefully, to McCall and, and, and figure out how these things go. But that's something that's been a gap that I think that the way David is envisioning the new open space and land management program, that that could be something that would rise to the forefront over the, the coming years. Uh, Macintosh Lake sign plan invitation. There's a plan to put signs around Macintosh, uh, which doesn't have a driver right now. West Range Neighborhood Park is the 10 acre park just west of, of uh, Dry Creek Park. So right where that AHI underpass is at 75th, that's where, well, This parcel right here is a future neighborhood park. Uh, just so you know, this parcel and the Dry Creek parcel, uh, Jim Crick is working with uh, some members of the public. We're going to be trying to trap and relocate all prairie dogs in that property this summer. Uh, there is an interest by uh, a property owner in Pueblo to receive the prairie dogs. And so it's a good opportunity to relocate rather than euthanize. And so we are making an effort to uh, Jim's working with uh, several people in the public to try to make that happen this summer. So you'll hear about that probably later this year. <clears throat> and then Omi is a property out west that probably hasn't been developed. We have a nine acre parcel of development no nature area out there. It's just north of the river along kind of like road. So again, though, that neighborhood, they don't have much out there. Oh, yeah, that, good, that's good, a good piece of the village. village. No village doesn't have much. Yeah. 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 Connectivity to, I mean, there's stuff around, but the connectivity is just not there. So the only parcel we own is roughly here, this, this square. And uh, there's no access to it at this point in time. There's no right of way. There's some sanitary sewer uh, access easements through here that we could probably finagle to get people down through there. But it's tough to develop a park when you don't know what all of your adjacent development is going to look like, grade wise, things like that. So it would be a challenge, but it's, again, it's a future project that we could certainly address if we wanted to, or directed to, I should say. Boulder Creek Estates is another open space property that doesn't have a master plan, just like uh, McCall Lake and then Terry Lake Neighborhood Park master plan. That's up the one I mentioned up north of 66. So those are projects we've identified. It's not even all of them. I have another 10 in my head right now that are sort of renewal and repair and things, but that's so that's really the presentation we have not yet sat down to prioritize projects for the 2024 to 2028 CIP because it's going to pretty much look like five or eight and five except for select projects we think we can fit in on the side uh, if you have thoughts about what those select projects may be please let us know either now or next month and I can figure out a way to share this with the board so you can look over it in fact doesn't have the other projects, but could you scan these and get a little quicker two sides in the, in the board? That'd be good. And that, just know those are living documents. They change on a monthly basis. They get updated. So if you see something on there, don't think it's set in stone. Things do change. Some of the uh, the extra room that you've got there, is that stuff like the pickleball court side of things? Is that what you're talking about extra room-wise? Possibly. Okay. Um, you know, the pickleball courts in question at Clark are being held by David and Timber Tosti, who's our operations manager. Okay. Um, but projects could include pickleball, such as, you know, Gallo is including four pickleball, so it could help relieve. Quail Campus is another one that could help relieve some of the, the pressure on the pickleball community. Huh. So, yeah, we're, we're looking actively to try to address the concerns that were presented to us. And the gentleman who was here before, it's the same thing with cycling. Pickleball is a little easier because the pickleball court, like I said, is just one thing. Mm -hmm. If you're good or you're bad, you're playing on the same court. Um, bike skills is a very tricky thing because, you know, you mentioned pro riders. We're not going to build a course for a pro rider. That's what the X Games are for. You know, we have to figure out where we fit within the region as far as and what this community needs and try to go forward with that without building overbuilding something that is too hard to maintain and too costly to design and build. So that's where we have to find that balance. But that's not currently part of what we're doing. 
Instead of going to um, go to the community like countryside village and ask them what, like what they're looking for in the sisters future area. Sisters Community Park. Sisters Community Park. When when we go forward and do that, we would engage all the kids in front of there. Yeah, countryside village as well as everyone else. But you know, Steve, out this because you just kind of lumped it pretty quickly there. But Steve and Kathy have always been really good. If there are schools in the area, if there's local communities that are a little bit diverse, they've done a great job of reaching out to those groups specifically. I just know that for the you know Gallo Park that. They went to Burlington Elementary, and those kids don't go to Burlington Elementary. They all go to Indian <coughs> Peak, so that's a tough okay. one, you know. So that's why I was hoping that in the Sisters Community Park that 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 would be, you know. And I know Countryside Village in Casa de las Lanzas are easy places to have community right. meetings. Right. They, the everyone that lives within I can't remember, a thousand feet, fifteen hundred feet, or whatever of this parcel was notified bilingually. With a letter before we started design. So I don't know if that included all of Countryside Village, but it certainly included a lot of it. So they knew where the meetings were, they knew when the meetings were. So it wasn't just school flyers, that was just an, an ancillary way to try to get more out of the public. And we did have some members, not many, but some members of that community that did attend a public meeting. On the, on the feedback side, I think <clears throat> I feel like I'd love to give some feedback, but I don't know enough from just the titles. Yeah. So I think for us to get through, like I was thinking about a couple of things we could add to that list that just probably are easy for you to just throw down there from your head. But kind of there's a couple different types of projects. Like building a master plan is very different from a renewal project or from a community park build out. Yeah. Building a trail is very different from a new fuel neighboring park and that has different indications. So some idea of like type, some idea of like roughly the size, is it a one million thing or a 10 million thing? I know you don't know that until design goes through. Actually, you'll see but cost estimates for most of those projects on the sheet. Okay, we shouldn't see it here. Cool. If, you, if you look here. That, that helps a lot. That, yeah, uh, not, for the, not for these future projects. We don't have costs for those yet because they're not really part of a work plan. But on the dashboard, you'll yeah. see where we have some money budgeted for these projects. Oh, those, yeah, okay. They're yeah. not completely up to date. They're last year dollars, but they, they're the ballpark. I think if it's, you know, you, if it's a 10 million thing or a 1 million thing, yes. right? Small, medium, large. They're, 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 they're ballpark. Okay, but look for the future ones I'm saying, yeah. These um, dollars are, I'm just going to tell you, these yeah. dollars come back with questions. They can be confusing because there's different funding sure. sources. Um, there's inflators that now we're seeing Steve talk about, Dr. and Bat talked a bit on these. We try bringing another project to make it more enticing. But how much did we bump that budget up from 3 million to 10 million? 13. Yeah. So I think as, as we're getting feedback on that, like it's, it's just hard to tell. If there's a million dollar thing that seems like a big impact, it might be 500,000 or 2 million, but if you have a rough idea, it would help us get better feedback. I, I can do that. That's not really um, so hold off on that. I'll, I'll take it. And the last one was just, you mentioned a couple examples of timeline, like the one to Terry Lake, 10, 20 years away, whatever no, that is. It really it depends on the market. In there, we're not going to propose Terry Lake as a priority then if we know it's further out. That's fair. You have a lot of institutional knowledge of what's possible yeah. for our future, and that would help us get better feedback. A lot of it depends on when we get development up in that area. Yeah, yeah, it it right. started and stopped and started and stopped two or three times in the past 15 years, and so yeah. it's going to take the economy to drive that. Can you go back to the extra, the, the like longer term projects? Yeah, so I'd just like to put a plug in for the, the Ahi, for lack of a better <laughs> uh, yeah. name trail, and the Clover Basin Reservoir, just because I think that that. Making that sort of nature area accessible would be kind of like a, a, a mini Pella crossing closer to Longmont. I mean, there's not a lot of places that are like that. We go to Pella a lot to get that more natural kind of experience. So I think that would be a really nice addition. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I have a question. Um, is it Clover Basin Trail Extension? Is it already going? So when it goes from what's called Sam's Club to Sunset. Oh, sun, yeah, uh, Dry, Dry, Dry Creek. Yeah, Dry Creeks. That is um, oh, the house. Yeah, so that is right. Sorry, Austin Fairgrounds and Super right Sam's is right yes. there. There we go. So it's 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 right here. The trail from Sam's Club. We built this trail on the north side of Sam's Club when Sam's was built. We'll be extending it over um, to Sunset Street. And uh, they're at 30% uh, design, working towards 60%. Uh, it's going to be supposed to be built in 2024. 
What? I spend this year designing and built in 2020. Do you have an interest in that one? Or that, I, I've talked, there's some challenges where it comes into sunset there and you're trying to get it. Yeah, um, you guys have probably seen this at BIC, in my guess. You should have, well, we should have. We should have, but we're, we're thinking of uh, flashing lights to cross pedestrians here. This road is turning into a two lane road from a four lane road right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be the road diet that's consistent with what's been done south of Ken Pratt on Sunset Street. And so moving people across, mm -hmm. then we need to decide, okay, we take them up frontage road yeah. and we get into this cul-de-sac, then what? Well, then do we try to build an intersection right here to get them up Jersey, uh, Price Road up to the Greenway Trail? Like that's long term, but that's not what this project is doing. And so right. I've deferred to our transportation folks to decide where we cut it off. I'm funding only up to Sunset Street. That's my project. But I mean, yeah, because that's a PR, that's a trail project. It's a PRA three project. Yeah, it's just yeah. There is there is interest to to get further into right. the city. Just somehow get. From Western, Southwestern yeah. Longmont towards the Greenway. There's a lot of, of um, competition for a street dollar, street fund dollars right now. There's a lot of projects around the city. And yeah. I know that there's they're seeking grants. You know, there's there's infrastructure grants that are out there, the dollars out there, and so I know they have people looking for those to see if they can stretch those dollars even further. Um, I know that there was a, a big project that was under design was to redesign Ken Pratt Boulevard from South Pratt Parkway. Yeah. Down to here, and that's just been a shelf right now. So you riding around town, do you see easier way? Or do you have some, some thoughts on that? No, no, like a yeah, challenging spot. Yeah, but nobody wants to be on Ken Pratt, right? So right. like that's, that's so that's a nice like back door down onto the Okay, way. so you do see that yeah. being a potential we yeah. can work that yeah. yeah. It could be done now. Like if you yeah, especially you, you can drive price road. Side, people right. are comfortable. You can drive and side. you can you can get on the sidewalk here and there's a crosswalk right here and a crosswalk right here, so you can get over. Um, we, we need to work to get a connection to the frontage road and strike that or Sharrows or whatever on that frontage road because it doesn't see a lot of traffic, in my opinion. That told us to fill our transportation plan. Yeah. But, uh, that's but yeah. Crazy that, scary intersection. Yeah, right there yeah. Those, those, yeah. Where you're talking about those, yeah. pe those pedestrian things, that's that's crazy. Right that's scary. I'd, I'd rather go through uh, the fairgrounds. I'd rather see this all go. Up into the fairgrounds to get to that. What's cool is that eventually we'll have both. Um, th th this this is a route that we've identified that we want to make a connection to, but there's also a route from. You know we're we're looking for sorry. This area is slated for redevelopment. The Hobby Lobby, this whole parking lot that everyone races through, myself included. <laughs> That's a, I can get sixty through here. I think. Dodge <laughs> <laughs> uh, the potholes. But uh, but no, this this is slated for redevelopment through here. With that redevelopment, we're gonna we're gonna be looking closely at pedestrian connections, not on Hover, connecting up here, connecting into the fairgrounds property with them with their redevelopment uh, challenge or process they're going through. We've been in communication with them, talking about pedestrian connections through the fairgrounds, not on pushing out to Hover, and then connections up to the RSVP project and the trail that comes up here. So that is they're both goals to try to get people off of Hover and off of Ken Pratt because there's only a certain segment of cyclists or pedestrians that are comfortable walking along those major roads. Awesome. Thank you. And can I ask about another trail park here? There is a trail extension, uh, it's kind of, I don't even know what it's called. It's what we just kind of called the Bald Eagle Trail Block section. Uh, that it doesn't quite get to Mill Valley. It's, it's the oh, one that's, yeah, uh, yeah. Near that big pot by, by the pot shop, yeah. yeah. Is what what's the status with that? I mean, everybody sees the beautiful like start of the trail yeah. and it ends, and we tell them the whole story. But we were told that you know at some point that that could that we start because again, all of these condos have no and people in Mill Valley have really right poor connection with the rest of the city. So you you kind of jump across to get to Third Avenue, but mm -hmm. um, and all that extension. But it, these are really bad intersections for. And there's no I'll check with the gym, but that eagle nest has been gone for a while. Yeah, so we yeah. do have opportunities. Okay. And so, so, that, so go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. yeah. So <laughs> for, well, for board members that weren't here, because Scott has been around for a long time. We had originally built the same thing Greenway. Here's the Greenway, here's the 119th Street Trailhead, you know, Ken Pratt Boulevard, 119th Street. We had originally built the trail or designed the trail to come over here and cross underneath County and I Road here and come down across the river to the trailhead. 
That was the original design. Well, we got through construction up to here when we were alerted to an eagle's nest in this location. We had to stop the project, redesign. It took a year and a half working with the, the, the state and the feds to redesign, and that's why the trail comes now underneath 119th, down 119th Street, the Quicksilver along Quicksilver <coughs> and underneath Kyline Road. So that's what we built back in 2009, say. Mm -hmm. um, the, there is the desire to make this connection up to Mill Village. Right now, our St. Frank Greenway efforts and dollars run 13 east, 12 west. This is sort of 14 in my mind. But the challenges of that is we have this quarter. We only old, we bought the old railroad right of way along here. We don't have access up to Mill Village. And getting ADA access up there is going to take a much wider swat because of the, the grades. So that will be one of the challenges. That's why this may end up tying in with the development of the Oni nature area. Um, what we're um, in the interim, we're working to try. You know, this property here is developing. So we want to get a side path across here. And I'm working hard to try to get some sort of connectivity between the end of this side path and 119th Street. And then we can work with the county to try to get a trail down. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to come together. You know, there's a big effort on redeveloping the Sugar Mill Hole area. And so this is mm -hmm. one of 700 topics of conversation around redeveloping that area. Is trying to make these connections. So it's, it's on the radar as well as on the radar is connecting uh, Pace Street yeah. down through this, down to this intersection with a, with a multi-use corridor. Not, this could be a side path, could be, who knows what it's going to be. Yeah. But, but something that's connecting down through there to get people to this light so they can get down to 119 Street. So is there, is there a name for this old version of the same brain? Same frame pit, just phase 14. I just, I just, 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 just phase phase phase. <laughs> Okay, I'll let people know. So, cool. But when you called it the Eagle Trail, I knew it was the Eagle Trail. Yeah. 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 You're in a closed area, remember? remember <coughs> that. Yeah. Another question you mentioned on the, the 858 or 85 plan, there were a couple ones that you couldn't get free bids on. A lot of that schedule is contingent upon getting the bids that you want. Do you anticipate that being an ongoing problem? Or is that just those projects are bigger and harder and less uh, So we increased the budget for each of the two parks that we didn't get good bids on. Yep. By it's a reasonable amount, half a million for one park and I think I did it like 900,000 on another park. And then by adding the third, the synthetic fields in, we have increased the overall budget for the three parks to a point where we think we can get some more experienced design build teams to come in and try to tease out and stretch your dollars. That's the whole concept behind design build is to try to stretch, maximize your, your dollars and not have, uh, it's supposed to be faster and cheaper. That's everything that I, I've been trained on. So that's what we're hoping happens. It's a very volatile market. Kent City Council had a presentation two or three meetings ago about several transportation projects and other projects that the city would love to build, but the bids are coming back double. And so we need to rethink about how we're bu budgeting for projects, which is, I saw your eyes raised. You went from a three million to 13 million for three projects. It's a big jump, but we'd like to get some bids. So we don't have to spend all 13. We can we can rein these folks in and say, you know, you're building a merry-go-round. Next to merry-go-round, we'll save a million and put that toward another project. We still have the say over what happens there. But we want to get bids. We want to have the money there for uh, so we can move forward. Mm -hmm. Irrigation pipe is up 300%. Across the board. How do you want to proceed, Paige? What would you like to go? Where would you like to go from here? Like I'm, I'm taking notes. Oh, sorry. I didn't know if you turned over the gavel. Kind of did, but also not. Uh, any other comments or questions on, on this topic? And so, what we the bigger picture is that next month you want feedback back from us, correct? You're going to see in blue the project eight five. Those are those are happening. You can give feedback all you want, but those are happening uh, per direction that I've received. Right. There's other projects, and you might ask for seven, and we might be able to fit three. I, I can't tell you, but I'll be here next month, and we can hear what you guys are recommending, and maybe the board can make some sort of recommendation or something to staff. It would be the staff, it wouldn't be the council, because this would be conveyed to council through the CIP. So should we all each number all these? Pick two or three we like. How do we want to? Yeah. It's hard to discuss. Carry forward. 
It'd be a good topic for the retreat if that happens. Right. Kind of thing. But it's hard to do it. It's just number one. So how each of us pick our two or three favorites, or how do we, you know, I, I'm not sure how to proceed to make it a finite time thing next month. That could make sense if we each pick our two top, like two or three, right, and then we, we, we see what overlaps between the, the seven of us. Well, there's these. Yeah, some of these are valid. Oh, some are yeah. oh. I will <laughs> clarify those, but there's also these. That are not in the work plan. So um, 37 to 20, so there's 10, 11 there, and then um, another dozen or so on the other page, so 20, roughly. Page what kind of feedback would be most valuable to you? I mean, if there's, I know that you have a lot sort of already programmed, so if we were, you know, going to try to make a case for something additional or for something to get moved up in the time frame. I mean, if we were to try to align, is it better if we try to align around something or do you want to just hear our, each of our individual opinions? Or? I would rather you align around something. That would be that would be more productive for me and add more weight to how we're moving forward rather than seven different opinions. <laughs> but but that, that being said, it could be as simple as we would rather you pursue trail projects over infill park projects, right. or infill park projects over trail projects, or it could be, as, you can raise it up, be general, in a direction that way, and that would guide, would guide staff in the CIP, or you can be granular. Either way works for me. So, I mean, I, I would think we could do sort of a mix, if we wanted to talk about this at the next one, have everyone um, like ready to talk about, you know, a couple different categories, or a couple different projects, and see if we have a one. <laughs> One other idea we can do is they're kind of in three different sheets right now in areas. Oh. We can just put them all in one list as the names with like the type of thing it is, planned, whatever. Type, size, and timeline. I think if, but what if we all took that list and we all had 100 points to allocate and we just put numbers in there, add them all up, and that's our average. That, is, that, um, is that too simple? I don't know. It works for me. I, I can put together. It's like talking about 40 projects is going to be pretty hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I wouldn't suggest that. <laughs> Um, we have done that before. <laughs> I will get you to, an updated spreadsheet with them all in one sheet. Did it, so don't did it work? Toss no. those. No. And I'll, I'll put. I don't think you guys care about fun. You just care about size. Correct. You don't care whether it's two million or three million. I think it will. You just care whether it's a half million, five yeah, million, like or twenty million t-shirt sizes. sizes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. right. And the timeline. Um, that's that's easy to do. So I can get that to you, Jeff. One thing to bring up is. I don't know what you're thinking about next week, but you talked about Joni and Becky and folks coming. Next that month. might take that might yeah, take the nexus of the meeting, so we might need to handle this digitally. Which it's up to you guys whether you want to handle it or not. I can take feedback however you would prefer, but I want to make sure the board keeps moving, gets their input on the CIP, but also keeps moving on the. When do you need it? Five. April. Yeah, I got to have the stuff to end by the end of the month. End of the month. So then digitally makes sense. Yeah. So, um, so when, when we're, we're choosing these, like <clears throat> the board comes up with these other projects, what, what's your idea of like bandwidth? I mean, because you're basically already set with this. Idea. Right, that's what like, I was What's the bandwidth? Like $2 million for their projects total? And why are we asking for years out when we're just that's still in the process of hiring people? That's kind of where I'm at too. I think this is a good, probably for me, understanding what's coming up. And this year, I'm not even sure how much difference it's going to make, but it gives the board idea was kind of up, and we can then not be rushed for the next time. Because I think the next time we will have some bandwidth, we will have some capacity, we'll have staff on, we'll have Steve having not three projects out already. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we'll be on Four phase, four, <laughs> phase 14 of the Greenway. Um, but I think just getting that idea of as we're looking at the future, what it's probably some other kind of way of saying, where is the public wanting us to look as we start meeting right The things? board has to be able to provide input, so we, right. I, I definitely want to take it. David's right that it's not going to have a whole lot this year. But does the outline here, so we, we change our priorities every CIP cycle, that's a five-year cycle. Mm -hmm. So it would help inform us in the future years, well, why, gee, why we can even put in the notes? Proud recommendation. Right. That's an easy thing to add for, to remind staff, remind council when they read every word of the CIP. That, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to uh, to make sure that uh, we know that Crab in twenty April twenty four or twenty three felt that these were priority projects. 
Well then, if it's not, if it's not, could we then take those two? I like your idea about having a retreat because this isn't a, a easy communication thing. It's like this. So basically, we we say something and then you guys counter and then we, like we don't ever get to discuss among ourselves our own priorities. This seems to me like a retreat thing, um, so that we can actually like as our group with that that would actually be really helpful to me. I would think I, I'd like to know about your biking priorities and the you know what I mean. Like I'd like to have more give and take between us, not us you counter and then we nod. Well, we have a discussion of the retreat on the agenda, so we can, there's a couple of things I was going to throw out for potential topics. So. Yeah, I mean, this seems like it might be, and then, but that would make it not for the this year. April. No, it would be timely for about April, for but if it's, yeah. but if they don't really need it because, if you don't really need it because you're not going to use it, why give our point value thing and spend our time making a point value thing when it wasn't considering everybody else's and ideas and and things like that, it just doesn't seem as valuable as what you could have from us if you waited a couple months when you're, and that couple, might be when you have time to read it. A couple months would have no effect on the 24 to 28 CIP. A couple months would have some effect on 25 to 29 CIP. There may be new board members, there may be new priorities, then I have no idea. It's really, this is a something we came up with to talk with the board you're welcome to talk amongst yourselves now. I'll sit here and listen. I don't mean to respond to everything. I just, I'm here for clarification purposes. Um, but I, there's nothing past mid-April. All the input you give is great, but it will be given to council. Staff has already done with our, our stuff. It goes to leadership. And then the next time the public will have any sort of input on that is when the CIP goes to council. But yes, this will have a small impact, but it will impact out years. Won't impact 2024 too much. So let's do this. Let's let's go digital because I think we need to get this before the next meeting. Plus we have a packed agenda for next for next month. So let's try to take it off offline as a digital. We're gonna up uh, upgrade the spreadsheet a little bit. Simplify it. Simplify it a little bit for us, and then we'll just make, set a due date for the. Well, how, when do you need our, our feedback by? Oh, that's you. We can have a 10 minute conversation next meeting. I'm sure we can squeeze something in. Before next meeting. Yeah, but but well, you can't have a conversation. Amongst yourselves. Yeah. That unclear. Yeah. yeah. Re yeah. Refresh that. Mm -hmm. This is an individual project that we all will take on, and then we'll group up at the public meeting to discuss. The next meeting. The next meeting. Maybe we want to extend to 9 o'clock. So we'll see. <laughs> Speaking of time, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Everyone. That's my presentation, unless there's more questions. Were, were you thinking of a, a retreat sooner, that this could be on it, or? I don't think we could schedule it that soon. Okay. Because that would. Especially, cause I've just like been in scheduling nightmares over like multiple spring breaks, so I'm like. Yeah. Okay. It's hard. I can't say five. Yeah. This, this month is about as bad as many will be. Thanks, Steve. Welcome. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. And if you have any questions once you get the spreadsheet, feel free to email me and I'll fill you in on what your question is. I, I do think staff value be part of this. <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, seriously. We we try we talk about trying to get recreation's opinions. How about it? I know we asked for it. I this would be especially convenient to me if you had the link to to the Google Earth pins on all of it. That would be great. I don't know that I have the time to do that between now. I'll try, but I'm not going to guarantee it. So the, the CIP like sheets all have the address and little yeah. map yeah. for every single one. That level. will work for all of the ones. All of these here are on the CIP. The future projects are not yeah. on the CIP, so there's nothing there. Yeah. So they all have a link to the map when you click on them? If they have a number, the ones that have a number, they have a full sheet for each of those CIP ones. Yes. Yeah. So there's a map on the, on the CIP. Mm -hmm. So if you can on the city website, you can just put in CIP. I, I want it easier. Thanks. I want it. I want to link. I don't want to. I'll defer to Jeff. Okay, please. That sounds good. I, I feel like that's a, a pretty good request. 
Uh, I'd like to do something linked to that, and then I, I feel like I'm sorry. Linked to the CIP. Yeah, oh, that, okay. that kind of yeah, that seems to me like a uh, respectful use of our time. Yeah, we'll we'll you'll have that tomorrow. Yeah. We'll, okay, that, that sounds great. Like with the, well, or just with the spreadsheet, that sounds great. Whenever we get that spreadsheet, tomorrow spreadsheet by the end of the week. Yeah, they, but like they could be together, right. and that would be good. And it's all in one spot, so that we're not searching for that too, and have ten different people searching. Yep, so this will come out when that when we just together. All right. The only thing I was going to say is I think this this feels that. That rush feeling trying to meet deadline by I think for this group, long term planning is a big piece. I mean, we've talked about stuff, so I, I think that this really could get wrapped into a larger conversation about setting sort of long term goals as we move these things up. I think that idea of Steve's of is it that we want to see more trail connectivity or is it specific projects? I think this group could incorporate into a conversation that could help us align with what we have as a five year plan. So this, this group probably should be thinking more in that that kind of time frame too, as opposed to how do we try to influence something next year that there's not. And I wouldn't even say a five year plan, I would say prioritizing projects because right. I can't guarantee it's gonna be done in five years. So I'll have to look at that. So prioritization of projects is really what I would need. Yep. Whoever it's worth, um, if you you have to go through the budgeting cycle once to understand if you don't have your voice in the first week of April, you have no voice, right? It's all, I'm telling you, it's underway, whether you're here or on city council, number one. Number two, I can, it would have been so helpful to me uh, to have had the result of this process, the way you just kind of framed it, David, that um, especially if it was by categories, right? Whether it's trails, right. parks, um, greenway, you know, how do you classify that? Because um, it, it's, it's always a challenge, in my mind, figure out how to be helpful, right? It's one thing to sit here. The one place that if you're, whoever's your liaison can be helpful is when you get into the budgeting process. And um, to, to let somebody know, we'd like you to carry, you know, our priorities into that discussion uh, and know what those priorities are. It would be difficult. I mean, I, there's so much there. Um, and part of what, part of what we're doing right now is a result of having listened and, you know, and tried to take some of that input into the budgeting process. But if you were to take that time and somebody who's a liaison could say in the budgeting process through a, his, the, a person's correspondence, these are the priorities for Fred. Um, and when it comes to CIP, these are the questions I'm going to be asking when, when we get into this budget. Even if we don't get it done, at least for the staff to know these are the things that you care about and somebody will carry some of those questions or concerns into the budgeting discussions. That would be really helpful. And somebody mentioned it's very consolidated. It is for staff too. If we don't have a lot of time, we can look at this mid February to mid April every year. And it's quick. Um, I could always come with the CIP presentation in January, but that's often when we're voting on new members and new all that stuff. And sort of it's somewhat of a non non productive meeting, less productive meeting. Um, but think about that for future years if you want to handle it a little bit differently. I'd say January would be better. I mean, I, I'm telling you, like that, this, like right now, this seems like a pretty fast rush, and I'm glad to hear that. So, like, I was like, why are you guys doing this, guys? If, if it's happening to city council, too, but if we just plan earlier, that just makes sense. I, I really feel like digitally is not the way I don't, know. I don't even know what I'd rank these people on. I don't even know if it's worth my time to, to pull this open. I need a conversation with humans right. is what and I the, need. The challenge with January is that Tom and, and Sam, they're brand new in January. They they don't even know us, let alone what we're going to be talking about. Well, I feel like I'm brand new. I, like, I don't remember this happening last year. Like. Okay. We, we do it in we some way every year, but yeah. it's always slightly different. And I, you know, I do think it would be worth having a conversation about the timing because my impression is that, like, when we have these conversations, the input that we can give is not that timely. So I wonder if we do something 
earlier, like even November or October, and just say, here's our priorities. You're going to retreat. You really, this, this, yeah. this thing's, this, the budget opens up and it's really quick, but there's no reason this work can't be done. Prior to that, informed the priorities, ahead and that's where I think is, as we then start looking at, you know, Steve did wrap up these two projects. We have that capacity now. What are the that next series that can start back filling in? We could we could keep that looking out in the future. We could really keep a again, like Steve said, every year we don't hit that target, but we know from this group these next priorities could start shifting into that. We have a lot of priorities out there. There's recreation in this group. I think it helped us start backfilling that. And that doesn't have to be done in January. It could be done starting that conversation with some dot voting or whatever you want to do and say, these are the ones we'd like to start start voting up. And then maybe in January we say we have one spot. What do you what do you think the one should be? Yeah, you know, we had that. I mean because this stuff doesn't I mean the details within the ones you're actively right. working on do change somewhat. But the other things don't change that right. much. So I feel like if we could have that conversation leading up to it, then you would have our feedback when you guys as staff go right. into this process and then you report back if... Yeah, I think one of the things that I hear too is like, you know, the organization project, what should we do next? But it'd be nice to know what the community wants us that. to do next. So. I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we should. I mean, because this... Were you in your room by yourself? <laughs> 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 I do think the spreadsheet has definitely like been helpful for me at least. Uh, that's been an improvement. For this didn't year. exist last year, and this right. was made for city council and leadership to be able to track a little bit more real time where projects are. Forward progress. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, because I feel like it's always interesting and feels important, but it never feels quite satisfying right. because there's such a short amount of time, and it doesn't feel like we really are positioned mm -hmm. to give quality input. So if we could figure out a different way to, a different level of, I don't know, conversation and priorities, and maybe that would help. Right. I, I do think that if it was June, well, July, uh, or October, November, like you yeah. said, that then we get to this point and all of a sudden we have two projects that are done and we start, we bring back this group and say, we, we now have capacity for two more projects. Where do we think we should start focusing? You, you have a lot of that work done. Do we still agree? And so on, so it would be, I think. The other thing that would help running priorities is that sometimes, even if a project's four or five years out, you might let the con county know now, say, hey, we're, we think we're going to want to build this AHI connection in the next four or five years. Start time thinking about planning, think about what's going to happen on their side, who's going to fund what, shared costs, so they can budget too. Having those conversations years in advance is a benefit. Steve, Staying on this on schedule, based on what you put on this, uh, we're thinking about this as a Gantt chart. Mm -hmm. Somewhat, this is, I had it different, but Harold made it this way to read better than him, so that's what we're going with. Um, uh, how, the relevance of the conversation you're having about the 2024 or 2025 to 29 CIP budget is tied as much uh, to how much progress you make. You've got design construction or bid um, without a narrative, without a mile marker, or a, uh, a, a, an intended um, uh, outcome right, by the end of the fourth quarter. Because if you're off schedule, it has huge implications for what you're able to do in the next year, financially and, and right. otherwise. Um, and I've had this conversation. Carol, uh, Harold and I looked at this spreadsheet. And my question to him was, what are the mile markers uh, for the design build or any one of those tasks by the end of this year? Um, so it's there. I've started having him put, drop this into the notes. That if, if, he if didn't we, know that, I don't think. I don't think he'll do that. No, no, so we just started figuring out where we could try to do that. So if you go, it's having everything on spot would be great, but you do have to kind of click in it. That's a project, and Steve has hit a barrier because it was a gas line out yeah. at... Um, Nino you know, Gallo or sisters, that should be in there. And when it shifts, that note should be there. We this should be a historic kind of running narrative then too. Yeah. We haven't come up with a better way to just put a date in and when a project is active, date in, you can update it monthly. That's what the election has been so far. Well I I, I would think hey, that would, that'll be really useful to this board. But that this this red spreadsheet is not available to the board right now. It's not public facing. It's only well, we can we can make this I don't know where we're going to go. We can make it as public facing. We can we can work on it. 
It's going to be. <laughs> that's, that's what the CIPs work, David. I really feel. I think with this group, then it could be a monthly update at this at this meeting. Then. Well, well, let me tell you, see, that I've been asking for that for a while, and um, whether it's public facing or not. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can see, but to have this thing available on on the website, I wasn't talking you, about. I was, I, but I was suggesting for this. I understand, one. but but this is all live linked based yeah. on City SharePoint. I don't think ETS is going to let these folks yeah. into our City SharePoint. We can lock that uh, down yeah, pretty yeah. easily. Yeah. Every month, this can be something that, that that's a piece that comes in your packet. And you can have to see a yeah. a locked version of it, maybe. Yeah, just in the name of accountability. Um, but you figured out yeah. whatever you want. I would just say, uh, last year at some point I read through most of the current CIP with the projects and what you went through tonight was 100 times more valuable, more valuable than that. So the narrative part is really important. The things you're commenting on from your experience mm -hmm. about why we might do this, where it might go, the time frame is far more useful than those one pagers, at least to me as a resident. So something in between of those, like all the info's in the CIP, but it's pretty intense as a document. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't even, the public face in CIP doesn't even have all the detail that we provide to City Council, right. um, which has more information as far as timing and things I like see, that. I see, I see. And also seeing the stuff that once a month, I mean, I can't be the only person who can't concentrate in a room of 15 people and think about stuff. You guys get to see this all the time and like deep dive into it, but it, it's, it's tough for us to do that because there's, I mean, it's just not accessible. And if I, the, the reason why I got on here on the board is to make this whole process more accessible. That's the whole point. And it, it's just a lot of times the information isn't very accessible for us and for, and that's, if I could paraphrase what I think Dr. Waters is saying is that making it accessible and understandable and digestible for us yeah. and uh, for us to come back and forth on our own time when we're not in a, a room that no nobody can think in here, right? Like we're not, I'm not the only person. <laughs> like I mean, th okay, good, but you're the the outlier. I'm a teacher, so I know that nobody can think when all that stuff's going on. That you need some time to to suck it in and and really ruminate over it. And it'd be really nice if we could have that. You know, I can think of you when I go into city council chambers. Oh, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can. No, I get it. Like it's just hard, but it is really hard to make our decisions and. In this without being able to talk about accessible. What I'm really, I guess, yeah. you, there's got to be, and again, it may not be by, we'll, we'll figure something out for next month. But um, one of the things I'm trying to get to the Herald level as well is just on these projects, just some sort of red, green, yellow. Is yeah. it on track? Even that if it's not on track, there should be a note. If it's green, you're not going to see anything. Yeah. If it's yellow, it's here's something I'm going to think about. If it's red, it'll be. The reason we ran into a gas line. That's I'm trying to get to that point, but I don't need Steve to be thinking about that. It's, I'm trying to keep it. They're doing the projects. They're doing the spreadsheets. They're doing the prep updates. There's a lot of communication that doesn't help them get their projects done. So if I can get information that they're already putting in, some that's what I'm trying to do. Is where's this information going that we can pull it in and provide? I, I see some of my hair. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. I was just. Uh, it sounds like the problem for you when you manage it yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it sounds like this will be something that will be solved in the future. Is that right? We're, like, we're, we're hoping yeah. making progress from what we saw last year yeah. to what we have here to where we're, we're yeah. hoping to go. Yeah. So just a quick jump in here. Uh, time check. We have five minutes until we have to extend. I think we're going to have to definitely extend since we have some new business and we have to pack some companies and everything like that as well. Um, so we usually extend 15 minutes or? Usually, that's where we start. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we extend the meeting 15 minutes, state 45. Thank you. Second. Second that? Okay. Can we take a vote on this? Or it yeah. yeah. Let's take a vote on this, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have food. Right. Okay, <laughs> cool. All right, awesome. So, next up on the agenda, and this is discuss potential retreat. Cool, so this is kind of hand in hand. So I think Paige, and this is, you're gonna talk to this. Yeah, this so one. this is something we talked about it last year and didn't ever settle on doing one. So I thought, you know, maybe revisit this year. I do see think our Boulder County, you know, uh, counterparts do this every year. I think a couple of times a year they do retreats. 
Um, and the idea would not, would not be necessarily to go somewhere far away, but just, I mean, we could even go to like the um, Isaac Walton building or Sandstone or Callahan House or something, I don't know, somewhere that we could all, you know, just sort of talk together. We could have a sort of learning session, conversation. Um, one topic that I'm interested in uh, is just learning more about how all the different master plans work and fit together. And since we're thinking about you know, master plan on the recreation side, and at some point maybe we're going to go back to the sort of parks, open space trails, and then, you know, I didn't realize until we were starting this that there's also like lots of individual project master plans. So, I mean, that's one topic I would be interested in learning more about is just sort of what are the um, master plans that govern the things that we have um, some jurisdiction over, and then, you know, maybe that would lead into some conversation about the upcoming sort of recreation master plan. I think the CIP process, you know, might be another topic. So I would just throw it out there. I'd be interested if people want to do it. And, I, you know, I would guess maybe like a half day. And we could have, you know, a couple, like a couple of sessions. And... Another thing I think we were just kind of talking about with the CIP process was like, how do we all get information about these parks and places? Like, if you're Steve and you have them all memorized, it's much easier to keep in mind I get it. about them. I, totally get it. Mm -hmm. I think we probably all have our own patterns of how we use the city website to find things, whether it's Googling or searching the city website. We yeah. could probably provide good feedback as to how the public might also consume information better and know about what's happening nearby to them, because it is relatively difficult to find out what's going on with a certain park. In my experience, yeah, the uh, the parks, open space, and trails web page. Uh, the city communications uh, department is working on up changing, revamping the whole city web page. Okay. That is a project that is active right now. Okay. I have no idea where they are, what their time frame is, but that is something. But we just we don't have a staff person that can keep this thing up to date and put all those different projects on there. We just don't have that. Right. And so maybe the communications team could possibly help us in the future, but um, right now. We have our park and trail development, and this thing. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of thought. It's just not complete. Right. It's just not complete. And, the names and, change and yes. timelines change. Yep. And I, I think yep. so. Especially you guys update that all the time is not feasible, but there yeah. also are other ways you we could brainstorm other ways to access information, I guess, in the retreat. Sure. So I guess, I mean, I think right now it would be helpful just to know if people want to pursue that and then you know we could do some additional um i could maybe work on some potential topics and share with all of you or you could submit them and we could you know kind of decide the next one and you know i think i mean we could maybe think about may if we do how does it work if we do a retreat i think it still needs to be open right? yes yes um so it has to be noticed and do we can we would we do it in addition to a meeting, or we would do it in place of a meeting? Uh, that's up to you. I, you know, can we use can we use a city facility like you mentioned yes. for that? Mm -hmm. okay. Weekend, weekday. I was thinking maybe a, a sat like a Saturday, yeah. just because it's. I personally am really tired at night. <laughs> I'd be fresher in the morning. But so, any thoughts, feedback? Yeah, I, I'm all for it, and I think it would be like in addition to the like the field trip meeting that we have. I think that's invaluable to bring right, people yeah. out to see things. Whereas a retreat would be in a particular location. I know we have Google Earth, but <laughs> seeing yeah. it, see it in real, real space. I, I get it. I know I go quickly, and I know this. No, 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 this well, I apologize. Um, something else on your retreat would be to talk about what your field trip you want to look like, where you want to go. That, it's always something that. The board struggles with trying to figure out if that might be a topic of conversation. I think, I think you already decided that it's float trip, right? Is that feasible? I mean, we it's yeah we in Dickens or somewhere else. That's a public spot between with the snowpack now. Yeah, I don't know when it's great. Well, it's likely to end up closed at some point this year, with it, depending on the weather. But uh, between mid May and late June, early July, it's possible. I think we're interested, so maybe right. we, can we can talk, talk about we can it. We talk about logistics, Jeff. We'll 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See what waivers we assign for that. Waiver waivers. Yeah. No staff will be allowed to go on. I think that there's a canoe outfitter that does that too. Well, I, I have, yeah, I have access to twelve canoes. This is why we yeah. have to have like a retreat or something. I don't know these things about people. Personal first, yeah. Yeah. I barely know people's first names. Like so and so, I like the idea of these things being kind of close together because then we build momentum a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. does that make sense? Like not necessarily, but kind of close together so that we are building momentum and you know. Wondering. So I mean, are you thinking May? That's yeah. well that's what I was wondering. Half day, Saturday in May. Thank you. Rhymes, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we have to do. I like thinking a day and like doing a doodle for the day is the easiest and hardest thing at the same time. Well, we could do a doodle for each of the Saturdays. And yeah. And then see. Yeah. Which one? Is Sunday horrible? So this one for the hoof. Yeah, I can do Sunday too. I don't know about these. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think there might be a policy against hosting city public, city public. open uh, yeah, open Sunday. to public meetings on Saturday. Saturday. Really? I, 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 think might, I think there might be a policy. Where is that? Well, that's interesting. Uh, not that's on Saturdays? Saturdays? Yeah, it was on Sundays. Oh, Sundays. I was just so if we did that on Sunday, it would be better <laughs> that we did it in the afternoon, mm -hmm. Sunday, rather than I'm assuming you're going to want to go before before lunchtime on a Saturday. Yeah. So that's everybody. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's, um, if there's general support, maybe we can look at those Saturdays in May and um, am I allowed to collect ideas from people for topics? Um, no, they should send them to David and I. And, and we then can we can talk them. about them? Yeah. Okay. So send your ideas to <laughs> <laughs> David and Jeff. And then we'll talk about them during our next planning. Topics. Great. And mm -hmm. Can you do the doodle poll or do we have to send the dates? Steph and David will do the doodle poll. Yeah. 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 Steve can do that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Libby, <laughs> bootstrap. Uh, I'm fine with those. As yeah, I was going to say, you can all like, adjourn no, and go to lunch. Just can't talk about it. Right? Yeah. Quiet. Quiet. I've, done, I've done public meetings at breweries before, but staff isn't allowed to drink. We've done it several times. What kind of staff? That's why I almost brought this to the keg. <laughs> <laughs> at least we could do it. All right. Okay. Uh, let's, let's move on to discuss items from the packet. Who's got any questions about items from the packet? Um. Uh, Isaac Walton Beach One. Oh, that's my question. Yeah, just, okay. Uh, slash Boston <laughs> Avenue Bridge Nightmare. On, um, if you could update us yep. on the timelines and how it's working. So, as you might be aware from reading the paper, the Boston Avenue Bridge project came in almost double engineer's estimate. Staff is working to try to secure funding through different, what, what was it? Uh, Budget lint? Is that the term you know? <laughs> yeah, just, just, budget dust. Just, yeah, just, yeah. trying to find some budget, magic budget dust. That's a lot of dust. Five or six million dollars. <laughs> um, I know that, that our leadership is talking about strategies to get that funded. I do know that it's a very important part, uh, important project for the city, so it will get funded because that is part of our match for the $10 million for the core to build their project. So we can't really walk away from it if we want that next project to be done. So I'm confident we'll figure out a way to fund it. Um, if we start construction by late May, I'd be happy for the bridge. For the bridge, the Army Corps, of which we have no control over their time. Last I heard, is they they want to start construction in July, August, and try to get that. Um, I think I put that in the the update. I think they're looking in July now. Um, we don't have any control over that. They're they're struggling with supply chain issues and construction pricing and things like that, just like everybody else. And um, I think that they feel as though they would be better to build that levy, uh, levy dam in the fall after runoff and try to work it through the winter and be prepared for spring 24 runoff. It's a logical disaster for them. Okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, so it doesn't have to go back to bid. Um, 
The, the bridge project? Yeah. No, no. Last I've heard, anyway, now it's always an option, but right. I know that the city is very intent on getting that done as quickly as possible. Construction prices are only going up right now. They're not dropping. We're not looking for the, the sale price. Right. So I, I think we're looking for, to reward uh, to award to the low bid okay. on that project. All right. I haven't seen that yet, so I don't know. So you was it ready to bike alternative path or anything? Well, or you, it, it, yeah, I reached out to Josh about Reach One, which has been perennially like not closed. So right uh, to not finish, so that if Boston Avenue Bridge get pushed six months, we could uh, yeah, we, we could use time. it to yeah. get onto Boston Avenue. But if they're going to work on the bridge in May, that's a different story. It doesn't matter. So, okay. but yeah. if we had had this conversation, knowing what we do now, back in October, we would have done that. We just thought that the bridge, first of all, the bridge got delayed in the bid, right. and then we got received the bid. We don't have enough money now. We're trying to find the money. I would admit the city made a mistake. We calculated the projects moving sequentially, and there was a gap. And I'll own that. I'll, I'll own that on behalf of the city. We should have put a temporary trail up to Boston. Last fall, allow people to use it for the winter and then rip it out, but it's too late now. Like we're, it's not yeah, anything. Yeah, it's but by the time we got the funding and the rating and figured that all out, because that project is actually not complete yet, it's still right. not even construction acceptance. And I've got meetings mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks to talk about it. So right. even though it's not active construction, it's still not open to the public because it's close construction. Uh, that's that's why. So we wouldn't be at, we wouldn't have a trail there right now. We would have to work with the contractor for them to allow the public on their infrastructure because. Their insurance company is still on the hook for that piece of property. Right. So is the irrigation problem fixed? There irrigation, irrigation? Uh, they'll be testing uh, as we start up here in the next couple couple weeks, but they've done a lot of irrigation work in the fall, right before the snow here. Okay. Cool. Other items from the packet? I'd like to question. Okay. If, this is, if this is a long question, you can follow up with me later. <laughs> I didn't understand, like when you were, what was the language about the rec budget being like under, <laughs> under allocated, underfunded? Yep. What was the word? Yeah. Yeah. Can I'll you explain that? This. I'll try to keep Like it I said, if it's too long. Then. Well, so, so that's, I do, intended to do that. Yeah. We'll redo it in a, in a more of a chart form. That, that'll Can be you easier to. Like like what, the, what that the, means? The simple part, the simple basis is that 25% of recreation's budget was pulled at COVID. It still has not been replaced. Last fall, we ran out of budget. We, we didn't have enough money to complete the year, but due to position savings, we were able to transfer from staffing into operations to get us through the end of the year. We are now running at 100%, and our revenues are higher than they've ever been. <coughs> And yet our budget is still cut by 25%. There have been some things that have been added back in, but overall, we're anticipating running out of money even earlier. And so we're looking to reappropriate um, at some point, which has been a part of this process that, that recreation can go back and ask for budget when the time is here. And the time is here, in my opinion, based on mm -hmm. what we're bringing in, what we're doing, our participation numbers. So that's the... So will you, in the next budgeting process, be able to ask for an increased budget to return to if the revenues continue on? Yes. Yeah. numbers, yeah. How can we support you? Just be aware of it. Um, what we think is that that this will will be told. I'm going to try to give information to finance after this month, so a quarter's information. Um, what we think the general will likely tell us is to come back in the middle of the summer, halfway through. The because we'll, we'll have money reappropriate that time based on estimates on what will get us through the end of the year. So, staff wise, full time, full -time <coughs> staff utilities are not included in, in what I'm talking about. Those okay. have been fully funded. So, that's the, the super short version. <laughs> <laughs> and next month I'll have a quarter's information. So. Okay. Great. Any other items? Okay. I see that irrigation is starting up, and I always have, I mean, I'm really concerned about our water use and things like that, and I'm wondering, um, who can I find out, like, how, like, I want to know more about irrigation, and if, like, I see a lot of our xeriscape uh, plants 
that were put in like right after the flood and things like that. They're still being irrigated, irrigated many days a week and things like that. And I feel like that could be a budget savings also with us sucking from the Colorado River, um, something that we could stop doing. You know, if we have their escape plants, they're getting, and now they're getting watered tons. And I know that they survive without it. How can, how can I promote that? How can I get us to stop irrigating, over irrigating? What I see, and I, so I think that's a piece that we have multiple staff members working on that, but not only working on it internally with concert with our conservation group and our sustainability group, but also we have Northern um, Colorado Water Conservation District coming in and, and working with our on our irrigation systems. Um, our irrigate. Irrigation systems are large and complex. So we know it's not like your, your home where you can just turn off one little piece. A lot of the stuff that if you turn off those earth plants, we haven't really redesigned irrigation systems, it doesn't turn it off of the trees. So if we want to keep our trees going, we we've run into that in the past where we like, oh, our turf is fine. So we're working on how we can redesign some of our irrigation systems that are older systems that still have very broad coverage zones. So we're getting grants from Northern um, Colorado to look at some of those, and we do those park by park, and as we do redesigns, we'll work on it as well. The other piece is people drive through parks and see irrigation on at times, like, well, why are you on right now? It's the middle of the day. There is absolutely no way we can water all of our parks with our pumps at night. You, you just There's just too many acres to do that. So we, we have a lot of pieces come in as far as the the size and scale of the system and the age and ability and the zones of the systems that we're, we're working on. So it's something that, again, we're working with water, our water our water group, my horticulture group, and outside consultants. Okay. I would also say, especially for drip, David talked about irrigating turf, especially our sports fields, which is what's starting out now. The rest of the irrigation won't be coming on until early April. So it's right. just the community park sports fields oh, okay. that are coming on now because they'll start playing here in a couple of weeks. It's they're they're playing, playing now, okay, they're playing now. first. Yeah, um, but if you see drip that's on or broken, report it. Yeah. Use our call center, report it to location, whether a pin or whatever, because as complex as our systems are, we don't have staff to go out and check every emitter on an annual basis. If that happens every 10 years, I'd be surprised. So if you see something that the drip is on seven times a week or something, let us know. We can fix it. Yeah, I'd love to. So that's where they're like downright floods sometimes. And oh yeah, call, call, that's call, call center. That's call call center. center. Um, photos, service works. Yeah. Yeah. service works. Maybe you put it right in that yeah. service works as well. Um, yeah, those are things that we just, you're our eyes and ears in that. We just don't have people everywhere to do that. So, great. Okay, let's move on to items from staff. We got two minutes, we don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> we can always extend. If we, yeah, if we had 10 minutes, we're staff. So, we're. <laughs> <laughs> Items from the board, and we can extend. Okay. I guess I have one quick one. David, did you know the bathroom that I brought up at Pat, Pratt Park a month or so ago? They put in a porta potty. That was great. Did you know that it got blown up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's yes, still glass there. We actually, oh, there is. The thank you for passing that. Um, just so the group knows, down the Wilson Mark system, we've been working with camera systems, we've been working with our our public safety officers, rangers, but our porta potty system right now may be done. Our contractor basically says that they're just done. With, all over town, yeah, all over yeah, town. Yeah, wow. Flipped yeah, over. Yeah, all flipped yeah, over, so and I'm using a picture of the one you're talking about, it's got melted right to the ground. Yeah, you see. It's terrible. By Longmont State Elementary School. There's nothing there now except a burnt spot on the ground, a rectangle. Good to know. With some glass in it. I'm really glad to know it wasn't my kid. All right. Well, <laughs> Sorry. Just, yeah. No, no, no. I couldn't resist. That's the good one. That's the good one. <laughs> that could be the end. There's right? anything else? Yeah, if there's anything else, can I have a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. I second. I second. All in favor? All right.